We all need sleep, and most of us don't get enough of it. But difficulties with sleep don't just lead to being tired. They can lead to difficulties getting along with friends, problems doing well in school, and can even increase your risk for suicide. The good news is there are things we can do to help with sleep. So how are sleep and suicide related? Well, if we don't get the sleep that we need, our brains aren't fully charged to deal with the stress of daily life. Sleepiness can lead to difficulties with understanding people or controlling our own emotions. Let's say, for example, you text a friend to hang out. They respond saying they're busy or already have other plans. Well, if you're tired, you may be more likely to assume the negative. Assume maybe they don't want to hang out with you. You may be more reactive or mean in how you respond to them, or you might push them away, ignore them completely, leading to difficulties with friendships. Sleepiness can lead to difficulties with learning or paying attention, which can make it difficult to do well in school. You may be more likely to blame yourself for that, feel really stuck or hopeless. When you're tired, you may spend more time in bed, engage in less activities, you may go out less, which may make you feel more lonely and it may make it harder to reach out to friends when you need help. When these things come together, we can be at increased risk for suicidal thoughts. And it's a vicious cycle. While not getting enough sleep can lower your mood, as your mood goes down, it can lead to more problems with sleep. Most of us are not getting the sleep that we need, whether it's busy schedules, staying up late with nighttime worries, or texting with friends. Most of us, and especially teens, are not getting enough sleep and we're not getting good quality sleep. What makes it even harder is that teens are biologically wired to go to bed a bit later, even though they have to get up early for high school start times, sometimes even earlier than kids and adults. So here's what we can do. Most teens need eight to 10 hours of sleep, though this varies from person to person. If you feel like you're not getting enough sleep, try to add 30 minutes at night or in the morning. Try to do it consistently. This may mean watching a few less YouTube videos the night before or planning your morning routine so that you pack your bag the night before and can sleep in a bit and get out the door when you need to without being stressed. Consider turning off your tech devices or putting them out of reach when you're sleeping. We know that emailing, texting, or checking your Instagram can stimulate your brain just as you're trying to wind down. Instead, consider engaging in a calming activity before you go to bed so that you can let your brain know it's time to go to sleep. No substances or supplements are a replacement for good sleep. Try to avoid caffeine like coffee, tea, chocolates, and sodas late in the evening so that you have an easier time getting to sleep. Resist the urge to sleep in on the weekends. While it might feel good at first, it's actually like giving yourself jet lag, which may make it even harder to get up and out on Monday morning. Try to limit napping during the day. When you get up in the morning, try to get out of bed. Sometimes it can be helpful to make a plan with a friend to hang out so you have something to get up and out for. Look, we all struggle with sleep at times, whether it's a test or a project or a breakup or maybe just too much caffeine that day. A few days here and there is no cause for alarm. But if you notice significant changes in your mood, difficulties with learning or getting along with friends, consider the role that sleep might be playing. And if you find yourself or notice a friend struggling with sleep, difficulties falling asleep or staying asleep, sleeping too little or too much, it may be time to say something or seek help.